This is video two of the Flame Monster Spawn series. In the first video, you added the tappable mix-in to the sprite component to allow you to remove the sprite from the game. You also added has tappables to the Flutter Flame base game. In this video, we're gonna add a timer from Flame to control the spawn rate of the dragon. We'll also instantiate each new dragon from a cached image to improve the performance if you had many, many dragons on the screen. Create a flame timer. I'm gonna call the timer Dragon Spawn Timer and instantiate it above the onload method without the callback. Within the onload method, we'll set up the callback property for the timer. So it's gonna run it every one second. So let's get rid of our for loop that we used to place some test dragons on the screen. And we're gonna replace the for loop with the callback for the timer function. The timer comes from flame and there's a property for callback. Initially, we'll load the actual image in the callback, and then after that, we'll load it outside of the callback and use the cached image uh, in the future. But for now, we'll, we'll just create an async uh, callback, and then we'll load the image from disk within the callback itself. I'm gonna set a random position, so I'm gonna import the Dart math package, and with the Dart math package, we can set up some random numbers, uh, it's a double that we're gonna need to set the X and Y position. The random package is from Dart, right, from the Dart math. So we'll set up a random Y and a random X coordinate uh, system. It's gonna return a number between zero and one as double. So we'll multiply that by, uh, we'll multiply that by, um, maybe 500 uh, or 400 for the width to actually get the coordinates for the X and Y system. Previously, we we're using the for, for loop to get the spacing of the dragons on the vertical axis, but now we're gonna, we want a random placement. So we'll use the, the random, uh, random y that we generated and we'll multiply it times let's say maybe 500. so it's random y dot next double to get a, a double and you do need a double for this vector position depending on your screen uh you may want to set it to 600. you can get the the height of the screen with uh, size uh, it's it was it's within the game, but we'll just set a hard number for now, and we'll test it out. To run the timer, you're gonna need to put a override uh, um, override the update method within the game class. So first, uh, set an override because um, it's built in, and then it's void update. You just need to pass it a, a, a double DT. For, then make sure you do the super dot update. And then right here is where you can now update the timer and it's going to run the loop. To use a timer, you just need to start it. So it's the name of the timer dot start. And I've got this in the onload method. Now when you run the game, it will have a random Y coordinate position. So we'll just do the same thing for the X coordinate. The dragons are still disappearing when we click on them. Adjust the X coordinate of the dragon uh, using a similar technique. Just use the other random, random X, next double, and let's multiply it times some arbitrary width. In this case, it's a pretty narrow screen because of the video, so I'll multiply it times 400. And now we have the dragons evenly dispersed uh, throughout the game. Now at this point, you could make the dragons that are lower on the 
y-axis larger and the if it's higher make it smaller that'll give it a little bit of illusion that it's further away because we're going to add a mountain scene to this eventually to keep this video shorter i'm not going to adjust the size of the uh, dragons depending on where they are in our virtual world here we'll just leave it all the same but you could adjust it for some additional uh, illusion we do need to set the max number of dragons on the screen. Otherwise, you'll be living with a thousand dragons if you don't click on the dragon to remove it. So we'll set a, a variable for the the max dragon and the current dragon count. So we can see every time we create a new dragon, we'll increment the, uh, the dragon counter. So at least we'll know how many dragons are on the screen and we can prevent it from going berserk and having a a thousand dragons on the screen if you uh, stop for a cup of coffee or something. Uh, this is not a good practice, but I'm just going to move the, the dragon count uh, outside of the class so that uh, I can access it from the, the dragon class as well, too. Uh, you probably don't want to do this in your actual game. This is just for this tutorial so that we can focus on just manipulating the sprites. So if it was an actual game that you're actually going to build a game, you probably want to use some type of better state management than making that global variable outside of the classes. But now in the update method, we can check the dragon count versus the maximum dragons uh, that you want on the screen. It should probably just be less than, not less than that equals. And then if it's still lower than your maximum count, then you can update the, the timer and that will increment and create another dragon to appear on the screen. So the, the dragon count's a little large at 20. I should probably cut it down for the test. Um, and then, do, but I, I think you can set it to whatever number you want, like maybe five dragons so that the test doesn't take so long. And then just make sure the dragons do stop appearing when it does reach a certain number so that it just, doesn't grind your program down. Let's load the image outside of the callback so that we're not loading the image every single time that it goes through the callback. And then we can use the cached image. So we'll set up a variable for dragon images. It's a dragon image. And then we'll use images.load, which is part of Flame, to load the image uh, outside of the callback. So the different pieces of the game can still access that image using the uh, images, uh, the cached images. So when you're setting the sprite property uh, before you were loading the sprite with a weight load sprite. So we're gonna change it to uh, just a sprite and then images dot from cache. And then we'll put the name of the file right there, but the system is smart enough to realize that you've already loaded the file. So it's gonna take it from cache. Uh, just make sure the game is still running and the images are still appearing. I have some background images uh, that I got from Home and Bundle. So I'll just drop these into the game so that we can see how the dragons would possibly appear on some type of very simple game. Uh, uh, Flame does have some additional tools for the background images. For, for simplicity, I'm just going to add the background image in as a sprite component because that's the component that we're already using and it's a known concept. You actually don't need to specify the, the position because it'll take it at zero, zero. 
uh, you do need to set the size of the the sprite component and there is a variable or a property size that's part of the game so that second size is actually the size of the game screen from the base game Just hot reload it and the dragons will go a lot better with that um, that background on the back. I'm going to repeat the process for the bottom layer of my background. Thanks for joining the video. Consider subscribing to the channel. I'm still working on some other Flutter Flame tutorials as part of my hobby that I started doing shelter in place in California. Uh, this playlist has 25 videos now. It's all free. And I'm working on another video tutorial series on a different playlist for a visual novel. Have a great day and have fun with Flame.